This is interesting. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Um, so, so basically, what I'm going to say is this show that's going to be at the Whitney is really, um, from what I gathered, the most comprehensive show that's been done of her work. She is now 83. Um, so, you know, there's a substantial amount of work. It's over 40 years worth of work that's going to be included in this show. Um, so let's see, L let me, let me do, let me do a quick, a quick, um, bio thing on her. She, she basically, um, was born in 1940. Um, her, uh, father was a trader. They were very poor. Um, she had, I think she had two siblings, maybe three. I'm not sure about that. Um, uh, I know she had a, at least one sister. Um, they grew up in a rather hard scrabble life. I mean, on the reservation, she went to uh, the kind of one of the mission schools. Um, and she started working as a child, you know, basically in, in, a, in a, uh, a store at eight years old. She was like during the summers and uh, on her off time. Um, and, you know, she, she talked about her, she and her sister used to go out and uh, um, scrape around in the scrap piles to try and find food. Um, so it, it was a very, you know, rough life um, from her childhood. She said when she went to school, it was the first time she ever saw crayons. And that was a revelation that you could make a mark on paper with, 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 with crayons and glue. She loved the glue. She said the glue tasted good. <laughs> so, um, you know, basically it was a rather nomadic life also. So they didn't really stay in, in one set place, but, but she did manage to um, make it through her childhood. And, and at, at a certain point, she, I think she said at, at about 12 years old, she saw um, um, Moulin Rouge, the, the um, thing on toulouse lautrec and decided at that point that she was going to be an artist. So um, she made it into college. Uh, she's really, at this point, an internationally known artist, curator, lecturer, printmaker, professor, cultural arts worker, basically. But it's her sense of humor and satire that she uses to examine the myths and stereotypes and the paradox of American Indian life. Um, so let's see. Oh, she's had, she's had over 125 solo shows, 650 group exhibitions. Um, and she's in, you know, all the collections, you know, MoMA, uh, Whitney, um, the Met, um, Brooklyn Museum, and too many honors to go into. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> um, she's been creating these really complex paintings and prints since the 70s, combining uh, appropriated imagery from commercial slogans and signage and art history personal narratives, She's, she kind of forges a, a visual language from a lot of accumulated um, personal and, and social and, and tribal history. Uh, uh, this is a critic. Um, for all the primal nature of her origin, Smith adeptly takes on contemporary American society in her paintings, drawings, and prints, looking at things 
native and national through bifocals of old and the new, the sacred and the profane, the divine and the witty. Her ability to create and integrate her own visual language in canvases, in her canvases, Smith produces multifaceted works grounded in themes of personal and political identity. Okay, so uh, we're gonna look at this piece that's up in front of us, you know, and basically what you get here is there's this kind of grid-like quality to this piece. Um, it's, you know, basically the forms kind of dissolve, fade under layers of paint. So these kind of mask-like shapes are, are pushing down the images from underneath. And you can see the press clippings and the, you know, basically, you know, these accumulated things that are attached to this image. So I'm going to move on. Okay. Uh, this is the first retrospective. Blah, blah, blah. We don't need to do that. Um, and basically, one of the reasons I put up this Jasper Johns at the top is to compare it to where Chuan takes this image. She's done a lot of these map things. And she's a very bright and witty woman. There's, there's, uh, um, a way of integrating these political commentaries into this contemporary visual language where Johns was using the, the kind of neutral um, uh, ubiquitous symbols of, of, of the map of the United States, of, of the American flag, of the target, of these different very ubiquitous and kind of um, Images which hold a lot of, 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 of meaning in different ways to different people, but are really kind of neutral in their, in their um, symbolic quality. You know, so you bring to it what you, what you see. Um, so this Fifty Shades of Brown that was actually a fairly late piece, but I'm, I'm bringing it up here to compare it with the John's take. This is much more um, personalized. The, it's direct, satirically using the names of commercial uh, uh, paint from the paint store. You know, all these different shades of brown have all these names that, that they call them. Um, and she uses them in place of the state names, historically recoloring America. Uh, okay. And here is the Indian map, uh, dissolving the borders. It becomes a patchwork quilt rather than a, 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 signifier of, of, of a country. Um, really interesting using m different materials. There's, there's fabric, there's all these different things that she's throwing in there. Okay. And these are some of her early pieces. Um, they relate to the earth, to the landscape, to, to kind of symbols of the teepee, of mountains, of, of, um, of sky, of, of different ways of locating yourself um, on the planet. And that's, that is, again, one of, one, of her, one of her things. It's a very different way of, of, of having a sense of place. Let me go a little bit further. Um, yeah, okay. So at this point, the pictographs start to emerge. And, and this is something which she, she develops over time. And you'll see as I 
go a little bit further with the talk that that um, there's quite a bit of that um, this kind of cubist approach um, merging and 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 uh, there's the, you know if you look in this image there's these horses there's there's figures there's all these different elements kind of merge together the mountains the um, uh, the foliage are all kind of um, inter interacting on the surface. Okay. Um, so the pictographs get clearer as, as we go along and, and these are much more um, obvious. You know, she had a pony when she was a child. Uh, so there's, there's that element that comes into it. That kind of biographical element is there. Um, and I wanted to actually put this, put this out there so that you can see, you know, I'm talking about pictographs. Well, let's look at what those look like. The, these are really... Native American pictographs that uh, from various tribes, the, the pieces that I've got up are um, uh, the actual pictographs on the stones are in New Mexico, which is where she has chosen to take up residence. She's lived there for, I guess, about the last 30 years, if not more. Um, so these, these are you know, common um, um, elements that that she would that she would have seen and familiarized herself with, but um, she's also well read, knows knows all this. She's she's really put together a, a number of contemporary. Um, uh, Native American artist shows. Um, there weren't many of those when she came into the into the biz. So when she first started to show, there were very few. And what I wanted to do was talk a little bit about one of her heroes, basically. Um, Paul Clay was one of the artists that she acknowledges as 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 a source of inspiration, and also as a as a uh, a person that gave her permission to to explore this abstract realm that she's that she's gone into. You know, he uses these pictographic symbols um, and the grid as an organizing structure to explore these kind of otherworldly realms that, that these seem to indicate. Um, I, I, know, I know that he was very interested in metaphysics and all that. And the spiritual element is, is also there in, in um, Chuan's work. She's very much a, um, attuned to the, the Native American connection to the earth and connection to humanity through um, these practices. Um, there's, there's an element of ancestor uh, worship, of sense of continuity, of, of, of connectedness that she's, that she's very interested in. Okay. <laughs> we are part of the earth. Um, so you see this kind of flow, these abstract shapes, the, the pictographs have gotten a lot clearer in these, and, and you can actually see some of the pictographs that I showed you in that, in that little um, lexicon that earlier. Uh, So 
this was something I meant to explore a little bit more of, but didn't, didn't have a chance, but we'll talk about it. Um, the ghost dance dress. Um, it's, it's really part of the, um, the veiled sense of, of, of loss, of covering, of, of um, uh, the ghost dance cult was a cult that rose up among Native Americans as, um, as their way of life was, was um, being decimated. And um, so the, the ghost dance was, was really kind of a messianic uh, movement that happened. It did not go on for very long because you know that sort of thing did, wasn't put up with by the American, uh, the the United States government. Let's put it that way. Did not really like this. It was repressed because it was really um, um, standing standing up to and 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 they were they were looking for a leader to come and bring bring back their lands and give them back their, their home. Um, you know, when you look at some of the stuff that's underneath the surface and took them clean away. And if you look underneath there, he stole. And there's, there's down below, there's and stole, you know, so there's this whole sense of of loss that goes that goes into these things. It's it's just you know these veils and layers, very subtle, beautiful color, beautifully painted too. Um, this is in the Brooklyn Museum. Ah, and. To give this a context, basically, she would have known very well the Rauschenberg work at the time. Um, he did these assemblage pieces. Um, so, Juan integrated pop and, and abstract painting and had a precedent through these kind of wacky things that Rauschenberg was up to back in the, the 50s. So, you know, by the time Joan was doing these things, it was, it was, the, it was really in the 70s that she started to do the, the, um, a lot of these veiled pieces. And, and I think that piece that we were just looking at was from 2000. So, and here's another one. From Juan and and you know Indian India Indio indigenous you know and and there's elements in it uh, speaking to the ecology of the situation that we're in the the eco the the ecological disaster that we're that we're dealing with in certain ways. Um, uh, she's got this little little piece down here that says O zone. Um, can you see this pointer, Joan? Can you see the pointer when I'm moving it around on the screen? Yes. Do it now again. Yeah, right here. Can you see it? Uh, just hold it. Hold it, uh, Larry. Yep. Um, I see mine. Do yours again. I'm doing it. No, I'm not seeing You're it. You're not seeing it. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, in the in the lower right quarter of this painting is O zone. Uh, <laughs> so um, you know she's basically dealing with the the socio ecological political circumstances um, in in these pieces. So there's a lot of layering, a lot of layering of meaning, a lot of layering of of um, uh, of materials 
um, how the paint is applied, how the collages are put in there, what, what's going on with all that, the veiling, the different media. Basically, um, okay, I see red, 10,000 years. Um, and if you look up in the top, you see her writing over and over again, I see red, I see red, I see red. Um, you know, uh, there's, there's also, there's these labels um, um, from something. I don't know what the package is from, but you can see them underneath the surface in the kind of middle area of, of the painting. Um, so she's really looking at the commercialism, looking at how, how um, uh, the, there, there's actually uh, the newspaper that she's using is a Native American journal that she, that she uses a lot and, and rips up and uses as the collage material. Ah, this one. Um, so, again, using the grid, um, you can see these patches of the of the the newspaper and and the pieces of um, collaged in there. You know, there's fabric, there's paint, there's all this stuff that she's using. Um, Interesting, this is this empty canoe. Um, it's kind of like they're gone. Um, the, the canoe is floating in a sea of blood and green. Um, it's, um, it, the, the culture is being submerged, has been, has been, painted over has been um, uh, pushed back. And the, the wonderful sense of humor that she's got about all this at the same time, you know, this whole thing about the, about the, um, the set of, of uh, Indian related um, uh, sports, memorabilia that's hung across the top and now you know this was this was painted in 1992 um we're we're now coming to the point where a lot of these these um uh these teams are changing their names because because they realize now and it has been pointed out enough times that this is um, rather diminutive and that it's insulting that, that, you know, basically the, the, the chiefs, the Cleveland Indians, the red man, the, all this stuff. Um, and, you know, just her sense of, of irony and, and the, the play that she, that she does between being something really hysterically funny and at the same time, very poignant and touching, you know, this empty canoe. Um, one of the things I, I've heard her talk about is one of the things that they, that they used to put in those trade canoes that they would bring up the river to her tribe were the blankets that were covered with disease, um, the, the whiskey that had lead in it, the, and, you know, she had a whole list of things that she came out with. Um, so it's quite powerful work and really whimsical at the same time. There's this sense of, of, of emergence and submergence that's happening. It's like, you know, in your face and yet not. You got to dig for it. A nickel for your thoughts. Uh, and up in the upper 
uh, right hand corner of, of the nickel is it's time for school. Uh, <laughs> They're quite remarkable pieces. Beautiful color. She's got she's got this really wonderful sense of color, um, and very much you know, at this at at once it's the social context, but it's also you know she's very aware of what's going on in the art world and very you know with it as far as you know, um, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue. Um, you know, she's she's doing the primary. She's doing the, the the business of what's going on with minimalism and reacting off of that. There's a number of things that are going on with color school and and thoughts about about that whole thing. You know, again, the grid like pattern, the repeat of the image, something that was going on a lot in in the in the you know. 70s, 80s, into the 90s. Okay. And she's done a lot of workshops with children, with 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 you know college at college level, but she's also worked with children and you know these wonderful drawings that, that are kind of integrated into this piece. Um, So it's layering of different ages, different different levels of 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 um, of the people that she works with integrated into it. It's a very large canvas. Again, this is sixty by a hundred, so it's five by, you know nine and a half feet or so. Um, okay. Some of the other influences on her. Now, you know, you see this kind of cartoon-like quality that 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 is is in in some of her work. Um, and Philip Guston was very influential um, to a lot of young painters. And 1969 was when he 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 can he started, he went from his kind of abstract expressionist paintings, which were quite beautiful, into these more socially conscious pieces. You know, very funny. You know, he's got himself in a Ku Klux Klan uh, sack with a, with a cigar paint, painting, and painting a self-portrait. Um, you know, he was quite the character and, and not afraid to ridicule himself. Um, and again, Frida Kahlo, another influence, somebody that she was very aware of and, and you know, the, the, the personal and indigenous merging together, um, the kind of dealing with um, death and life, um, so and then and sir, um, who is really um, dealing with a kind of of social um, uh, uh, Carnival, um, and and you know, ex very expressionistic. Uh, below we've got Goya, who again was another influence on her, and and these were called the uh, Caprichos. They they basically were um, very um, satirical views of of. Of Spain, of the Spanish aristocracy, and all that, and he did them in in these kind of um, uh, hard to pin down forms. You, you you couldn't really go after him for these because it wasn't that specific. Though he knew he who he was 
who he was satirizing. Uh, okay. And the war horse um, in Babylon. This is during the height of the, the Iraq war. So there is definitely a, you know, a correlation. And you see in the lower um, right-hand corner, this woman screaming, holding the dead child. And there's, there's again, direct reference to Guernica from Picasso in this piece. But also these, these, these heads, um, the skulls, it's, it's, it's also that business of um, the day of the dead, the, the, the mortality, the, um, the generations um, and the history. Um, the, the other piece is that, that, that organ, that heart that's up there, that's spouting blood, um, relates to um, Frida and, and in, in a couple of different, there's a self-portrait, a double self-portrait that I talked about at our last meeting, which has that heart out, outside their bodies and the, 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 um, the veins are feeding both Frida's. Um, All right, so let's see if there's anything else that I've got on this. Um, so the layering of the, the antique, the, the ancestor worship, the, um, uh, the archaic, and the contemporary are are constantly um, at work in 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 her in her pieces. Um, the presence of the ancestors. And you know this is a set of of uh, of paper dolls that she that she made. They're, they were actually in a shell. And I'll show you an image of that a little bit later. Ah. Um, so this is a view inside her studio. Um, and um, on, the, on the lower right, you see this um, group of, there's a skeleton and there's a figurine and, and there's this creature that may be a skunk it may be uh, uh, a raccoon, it may be a fox. She turned it into a fox, um, a coyote. Um, and she called it the urban trickster. So she actually cast it in bronze. Um, and you see this, the, this sculpture that's in the middle with holding the sword. And if you look up in, in the um, upper right, I mean, upper left corner, you see the painting that she did using this figure. And here we are. A very interesting painting. Um, so, I don't think I need to explain this too much, but uh, there, in the in the very center above above, um, there's a rabbit back in there, and the rabbit is a recurring um, image in in her work. And the rabbit is endurance; it's regeneration. It's like the there's a there's a kind of mythology around around the rabbit, and I really didn't have enough time to explore all the ramifications of that, I wish I had, but, but it's, it's very interesting inside this rather dark image, there's this, this sense of, of moving forward, of regeneration, of, of, you know, there's this little child up there drawing. Um, all 
Okay. And these are contemporary Native American um, artists um, uh, and she was in a, a show with the two um, fellows that are on the, on the left. On the right is Athena Lataka's work. Athena Lataka actually lives in Peekskill. She is, she's like just had a show and I don't know if it's still on at the Rockefeller estate. She does these gigantic pieces that are using um, earth pigments, things that she gets from specific sites and creates the pieces out of those, out of the earth. Um, so this is something which is, you know, uh, active in Zhuang's work too, which is, which is basically a relationship to the earth, a relationship to the specific places. Um, so Athena's work is huge. She's like, I mean, she's, she's very, um, getting a lot of recognition. She's had shows at uh, um, the PS, uh, MoMA's PS1, and she's, she just had the show at Rockefeller's estate. I'm not sure if it's still up, but Rockefeller's estate has a, has a um, gallery now, and this was, she was in it. This particular piece was in Chicago, but she goes to different parts of the country and does these workshops and creates these pieces. Um, I really love this Dick West piece too. It's really fabulous. Okay. So in this tribal trading tradition, um, she has the central figure as this coyote. The coyote is the trickster. He's um, um, traditionally he's he's like uh, he's a con man, um, good natured but wily, uh, and and you know the 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 whole point of these canoes. She's got a whole series of these canoes. On one end, there's the devil. On the other end, there's the angel. So there's, there's this um, whole sense of their entire community, their history, everything being transported in this canoe. Um, and there's all these little skulls, there's rabbits, there's all, there's all the stuff mixed together. Um, And again, we're back to the ghost dance, this, this you know, sense of, um, of the dance, you know, the ghost dance was, was like this whole ritual practice. And, you know, the, the um, dissolving um, layering of, of history, of ancestry um, in this in this piece. Now we're back to the canoe. Um, very funny. Oh, they got the Lone Ranger in this. One. She's got the Lone Ranger in the middle of this one too. <laughs> oh God, I didn't notice that before. And here's a studio view. Um, and these pieces are, were in a show in 2021 in New York. And I'm, we're going to get to that too. I'm going to, I'll show you that. Um, a lot of these um, map pieces are in this show that, that we're going to be able to see at the Whitney. Um, very interesting work. Um, let me talk more about that when we get to some straight on shots of it. Okay, 
So this, this map is showing just the states that, that are derived from Native American names for those areas on this, this block of land we call America. Um, notice again, the dissolving away of those borders. It's not fixed, it's not set. It's, there's these different, different areas, but it's not, um, the, the borders are not painted in. They're not hard and fast. And here are the symbols of the traditional tribe symbols. Repeating this theme, sense of place. Um, if if you look at the piece on the on the left, um, where the country is turned sideways and and America is over the top of of these, I would say you know basically kind of tribal pattern, um, um, you know pieces that would have been that would have been um, designs on, on fabric ornaments. Um, and the, um, the piece on echo too. the piece on the, on the, on the right, if you, if you look at it, they're, they're all Chinese, Japanese advertisements that have been, Placed over the top of 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 the of the states, they're collaged on over the top of things. So it's kind of like the layering of 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 alien or foreign things on this on this land. And here is here is one that names the tribes in the areas where they lived. In the future, we will all be mixed blood. <laughs> and we're reaching toward the end. <laughs> and one of the things that, you know, basically, again, the, the, the ecological um, edge of, of what that adios means is something that that you know is is definitely one that she's thinking about. And here is the show that took place at Garth uh, Greenan. That they actually are the gallery that represents her work in New York City. Um, so a number of these pieces, I think, will be in the show. And you see the, the, uh, the coyote head in there in the middle of the show. That, this was in 20, 20, 21, 22, something like that. Yeah, 21. OK, uh, again, these are contemporary Native American painters uh, and um, the fellow at the top, Joe uh, Federson, um, that, that piece, that big, that gigantic, that piece is like 10 by 40 feet or something like that. And it's made up of prints that he, you know, um, assembled together. Beautiful color, really subtle. Um, and the, the glass piece is also his work. Um, in the lower left is Fritz. Fritz Shoulder was was a a um, fairly well known uh, painter in the sixties and seventies. Um, he died in two thousand five. Um, very well known, one of the few 
that broke into the the um, the gallery market at an earlier time. Um, K Walking Stick is another fabulous artist that um, and there's a, actually um, a YouTube which is a dialogue between um, K Walking Stick and June Put to See Smith and the two of them um, really you know they they're wonderful together. Um, uh, Kay Walking Stick is a bit older. She she's actually from New York, from the New York area. I think she grew up in Jersey or something like that. But she's she's in this area, um, and she does these wonderful landscapes. Okay. I think that little photograph down in the lower left hand corner is is actually Juan when she was a kid, but I'm not 100% certain about that. I like to fantasize that anyway. Um, okay. So that is our story. Um, the show is is opening April 19th. Um, the YouTubes, K Walking Stick and June Quick to See Smith in Conversation, you can get that if you just Google search that. Um, Juan Quick to See Smith lecture from the Portland Museum. Again, if you look in, in you know, you just Google it in, in um, uh, and the YouTube will come up, you'll be able to get to that. There's a wonderful website. That is Juan Quick to See Smith's website, and that you can get to. And there's also a lecture at the um, Santa um, site Santa Fe. Um, I haven't seen that one yet, but I understand it's a pretty good one. But there's a lot of talks out there. So we're left with the with the rabbit. Uh, um, we march forward. Um, and the next talk is going to be in two weeks and it's going to be on Picasso because it's, it's, um, it's actually, um, something to do with Picasso's, um, uh, 50 years since he died or something like that. I can't remember what exactly they're celebrating, but they're celebrating it all over the country and, and in, in, uh, throughout Europe. So. There's going to be lots of Picasso around. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the program. And I hope to see you in all the programs. And if you don't remember, just go to our website, chappaqualibrary.org. Thank you all for coming.